Okay, hi everyone, welcome. We're gonna get started. Um, and uh, we are holding in the story of the Chacham and Tam. Um, we're up to the part. Uh, let me just grab the Rav Arish book so I can tell you where we are in there. Where we're about to see a very big change. And we're about to approach a point in the story where we start a new journey. Um, I'm just trying to, just let me find here where we are, one second. Here we go. Uh, the last thing that we saw was that the, the Chacham was always suffering. He was always unhappy. Why? He had, there were three particular situations that we saw. And they were that, the first one was that he, he, he a nobleman asked him to make a very special ring. And he made this ring with this, with this beautiful inscription of a tree on it. <coughs> and the nobleman <coughs> liked it. The nobleman did not like the way that the, that the tree inscription was on it. And this he could not take. He was broken. And then we saw that he was asked to, to carve a stone by another nobleman. And he carved it and it was just about perfect. But he made one little mistake. The nobleman loved it. But he couldn't take that he made that one mistake, if you remember. And he was suffering nonstop because of this. The next one was, was that he was, he was a doctor also, the Chacham. And unfortunately, he, he was trying to heal somebody. And it didn't work and the person died. And everyone was saying it was his fault. He was the one who prescribed what he prescribed and it didn't work. And this, he could not stand, he could not take. Then, also in the realm of doctor... He would heal people, but then they would say, oh, it must have been from something else because this guy couldn't have done it. And he couldn't stand it. He couldn't take it. The Chacham is always, always suffering. And we, we spoke in depth about what all of these things were. So, <clears throat> welcome, Sandra and Nancy. And Rup Shmuel also. <laughs> um, so so he's, he's, he's going crazy. He can never be happy. And the Tom is looking at him. And, and the Tam sees that he's always so unhappy. And so we're holding around page 222 in the Rav Arush's book. We're going to be <coughs> speaking out mostly from Rav Kivak today. But that's where we are in the story right now. So the story goes like this. So the, the Chacham is never happy, but the Tam... <coughs> It's coming back and forth to the Chacham every day. He's always besimcha. And he finds him that he's always full of suffering. And he's always stressed. He's never happy. And he asked him, A, well, a, a brilliant, wealthy person like you? Why are you always suffering? What's wrong with you? I'm always happy. I am always happy, says the Tam to the Chacham. So, <coughs> first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry, guys. I'm still, unfortunately, my uh, cough has come back. I have to go for a chest x-ray tomorrow. I'll make it through okay. strong, but uh, I might be a little bit out of it. I apologize. So this is what the Chacham, this is what Tam says, says to the Chacham. So what's going on here? Listen to what... Rav Kivak says over here about what this part of the story is. Because remember, Sandra, are you a Chacham? Yes, sometimes. sometimes you are. Are you a Tom? Sometimes. sometimes you are, right. We're not talking about one person who is just a Chacham or one person who is just a Tom. We're talking about, really in depth, we're talking about these aspects of ourselves. When are we too much in our head? When are we thinking too much in the wrong way? And when are we living with Tamimus, with Emuna and simplicity and, and Simcha, right? We're not always either one of them, but we all have a part of them. So here, the, the Tam is saying to the Chacham, is trying to ask the Chacham, why are you always so sad? You know what this is? Let's see. Let's see. Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Masafar Bezez Seder HaMishpat. Rabbi Nachman is telling us through this, the way in which we can get into a state of Mishpat. What does Mishpat mean? Judgment, more to the point, self-judgment, right? 
How can a person judge himself? That this aspect of us that has tamimus, that simple aspect of ourselves, <coughs> will ask the suffering within us. Why are you so upset? Why are you suffering so much? Because they didn't honor you in the right way. Why are you suffering so much? Because they didn't honor you in the right way. And it's not going. Things aren't going exactly the way you want. Judge yourself. That you shouldn't, you don't need to find, you don't need to, to get the approval of other people. You don't need to always be looking for the honor from other people. <coughs> don't be jealous of other people. Don't be looking to what other people have as opposed to what I have and say, why can't I have a brand new Tesla? Why can't I have the, you know, a, a spouse that treats me the way that that, that, that one does? Right? Why are my kids so difficult and those people's kids are just stars? What's right? Forget it. Why are you looking around to other people? They're not you. They have nothing to do with you. <coughs> Sounds like you're on my team, Nancy. Halazoyz chachma tikra. That's called wisdom. This is wisdom. This is this is being wise. Halay bazeh atarachik mechasidus va'avodas Hashem betachlis. With this type of behavior, you are at the absolute most distant place you could be from chasidus and avodas Hashem. Right? So what's he really saying over here? I love this little paragraph. Right? Because to me, this paragraph is saying, you know what we have to do? You know how uh, we saw, we grew up singing cartoons? You got a guy, a guy has an angel and a devil on his shoulders? Right? So we're not like that. We have a chacham and a tam on our shoulders. Right? And we have to remember that part of us is this tam. And what's the tam? The Tam is, is a simple person. Tam is not necessarily so bright. Just a simple, good person who does good things, who, who looks towards good things, right? Who has a Muna, who has Simcha. This is the Tam. And the people who are, are, are Chachamim, the wise people, can't stand such people. You're simple? Well, yeah, but you know why you're simple? You know why you're happy? Because you don't know. You don't get it, right? It's not true. So he's saying over here, he, the words he's saying are, is you got to be, you got to enter into that space of being the simple person. Turn yourself into the simple person. Turn off the chachma. Turn off the wisdom. And just go and be a simple person. And ask yourself, what are you doing here? Why are you suffering? Ask this to yourself. Why are you suffering right now? You, you don't need to suffer. You're suffering because, because people aren't, aren't giving you kavod, aren't giving you honor. Right? Who cares? You ever see such a thing? You know, I always tell, uh, we just had a wedding in the shul this past week. And um, I always tell the chasen and kala when they're preparing all the honors that they're going to give out to people. Right? And then I'm meeting with them to discuss what's going to be. And I always tell them, listen, from the beginning, <coughs> you don't need to give me anything. Because I know there's going to be situations where people will be upset. And people will feel they weren't honored properly and they didn't get, right? And, oh, you gave, how could you, you gave that person one of the Sheva Brachas? I didn't get anything. How long have I known you for, right? They could be very, very upset. So instead of going to a wedding and doing your job, what's your job at a wedding? To be misameach chasen v'kala. You got to make them happy. You make them happy, right? Instead of going there and doing your job, you spend the whole time upset and angry because you didn't get. Ask yourself, Turn on, turn your hat around, go from being a chacham to a simpleton. And say, oh, buddy, we're at a wedding. Why are you so upset? Why are you suffering? Why are you putting yourself through this? Let's go dance. Let's be basimcha. What, they didn't give you an honor? Okay, you didn't get an honor yesterday either. Who cares? Right? That's not for you. You have, what, you have good things to do right now. You have a mitzvah to do right now. You could, you could be happy. Focus on the good. And be happy. Right? And the Chacham's going to say something like, uh, it's not so easy. Because I was raised that you do this. And I'm a person. These are the words, you know, I've said these many times before. I was raised 
or I'm the type of person should never be in our vocabulary. <laughs> right? What does that what does that mean? So so what if you were raised in a terrorist family? Right? You say, Ah, oh, sorry, Judge, I was raised to, to what are you talking about? That doesn't mean anything. Right? So we have to become simple. We have to become happy and we have to run away from overthinking these inyanim. You hear this? I love this idea. So so look at Dara's shoulder and see a simple, happy Jew. He's not too smart, right? But he's a good person and he's always besimcha with Amuna. And that guy has got to ask this guy a question. What is wrong with you? Why are you letting yourself do this? The Tam <coughs> has mercy on the Chacham and is giving him rebuke in order to help him. He's trying to help him. Right? What does he say? So he says to him, Vadid Melachash at a Chacham. If you think you're a Chacham, it appears to you that you're a Chacham. You are not a Chacham whatsoever. Tistakel Bedarcha Yatam, Shatamin Sameach. Look at the ways of the simple of the simpleton, of the Tam. He's always happy. Look at the difference between you and between the Tam. You got you. The guy who's always suffering. Every single day, there's something good. If you want to look for something good, you'll find it. Every single day, there's a little bit of good. So look, choose to look at the good things every day. And then talk to yourself. And from that place of being the Tam, ask the Chacham within yourself. Why are you not getting out of this sadness? Why are you upset at everything? Why do you suffer from everything? So here now he's spelling it out very clear of Kivak. <coughs> Rely on Amuna. You are not a Chacham. You're not a wise guy. Ella Shaita. You're a fool. You're a silly person. That's who you are. Now these words are like going to be imprinted on my mind. Teach yourself to live a life of a redeemed soul. A, a, a redeemed, released, a, 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 what's another word for geula besides redeemed? A, uh, free? a freed, yeah, a soul that's become free. Right? Because it's, it's a prison to live such a life where, where, where you choose to look at the negative in everything, where you choose to look at all those places where, where, where you don't get honored, where you don't get, you don't have what other people have, right? Where people don't respect you, whatever it might be. It's a prison. You're living in a prison. You're constantly sad. You're constantly suffering. The Tom says, what are you doing? Don't do it. Choose to live in a way that you're besimcha, that you don't look to other people, you don't look for honor, you just look to do the good things that you can do. You look for the good things in your life, free your soul from this pain. Free your soul from this pain. There's so many, uh, there's so many aspects to this. You ever see such people, by the way? Yeah, like I mean, they use the, the term shote. They call yeah. him, instead, uh, like uh, you didn't call him a seal, a fool, but yeah. rather a shote, somebody who's lost his lost in his right. mind, right? Because right. you can go berserk if you don't have the right state of um, mind. You can go crazy from from from, from this type of thought. It's a harsh term. And you know, there's uh, unfortunately, you know, and remember, there are people like this. We can use them as an example. There are people who are just constantly almost irreversibly unhappy and they're negative at everything and you can't you can try you can over and over again over and over again you can try and pull them out and tell them to think positively and like the next sentence they're right back they've just they're they're so they're sunken into this oh yeah ruminating percolating yeah, boiling round, round. simmering <coughs> it's very hard it's very hard, it's very, it, it's very hard. And, and why am I saying this I don't want to pick on other people who struggle in such a way because it's a very hard life to live but I want us to remember that we all have that a little bit right remember we're a little bit of Tom we're a little bit of Chacham whatever we are 
But sometimes we just, there's something that bothers us so much and we can't let it go. We just can't let it go, right? So he's saying over here, speak to the simple guy on your shoulder and he's gonna tell you, what are you doing? You, you think this is wise? You think you're doing what you're supposed to, you're fulfilling your mission in the world right now? Ruminating, percolating, simmering <coughs> over this issue that, <coughs> that, bo- sorry, that bothers you so much? You're just ruining your day. The whole day's gone. You could have done good things. You could have done mitzvahs. You could have had an amazing time. You could have done good in the world. And now the day's gone, right? Not worth it, right? So here, my, 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 my statement for this part of the story is, is become a simpleton. Become a simpleton. And from that place, ask yourself, why are you thinking so much? Why are you going down these paths of, what do we call them? Toxic thought, unhealthy thought patterns, right? Why are you allowing yourself to do this? Just be simple. What detracts us? I'm, I'm asking this, uh, I know this is not the usual format of this year. We don't usually talk and have questions in the middle, but I'm asking for real. What are the things that detract from us, from the ability to really think simply? In other words, I'm saying to you now that we, that we need to stop and say, quit overthinking, quit thinking about what other people think, you're not in the moment, right? Sure. Why, what pulls you away from, from, from being in a state of, sim- of simplicity? So what did you say, Sandra? You're not mindful in the moment. So you're, you're not thinking, mindful, that's for sure. Are you thinking about behind or are you thinking about... The right, so Sandra's saying you're either thinking about the past, all the baggage, or you're thinking about the worries and the stress of the future. Also, like, sometimes we get very convoluted in our thinking, like, especially a Chacham who's learning a lot of Svaras and ideas, right? We get very convoluted and confused. Right. We just got to step down and be a Tom and just breathe in the air, meditate, and relax. Ah, you know? very good. We can just get too much in our head, yeah. in, in essence. Yeah. And we got to step back and say, all these thoughts are not bringing me to the place where I, where I need to be. They're bringing me, it's the thoughts of it, it's, it's Chachma, what we call in the Sefer, Chachma de Sitra Achra. Right? So, <coughs> it's not taking me where I'm supposed to be. It could be ego. Ego, this is the one I'm thinking. It could be imposter syndrome, it could be so many things. Right, so many things. Lack of confidence. So one of the things is, you know how, you know how I, I said like this before? I said, so you're going to meet people and you're going to be happy. Right? You're, you're on the path of Emuna, you're on the path of Tamimus. And you're going to meet people, and you're going to be happy. And they're going to be like, how could you be happy? Don't you know what's happening with the economy? Don't you know what's happening with that politician whose side I'm not on? Whatever, it doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> Don't you know what's happening in Eretz Yisrael? Don't you know what's happening in America? Don't you know all this stuff? Don't you know about the latest thing and, and what their drugs and who's doing what and governments and fluoride in the water. Don't you know all these things? Yeah, true. Right? And there's a part of us that says, you know, you have a, maybe a little bit of FOMO, maybe fear of missing out on all that stuff. Maybe there's an ego thing where you have to say, <laughs> wait a minute, I, I, I should know about it. If this person knows, then I should, I should certainly know. Right? I got to find out about, the, about, about like all this stuff. You don't know? Right, you right. Stupid? I have to find out about this you stuff. There's so many aspects to this. So, so at that point, what do I like to say? Stay in your lane. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you're just ignoring it? Yeah. Yes, I'm just ignoring it. <laughs> what, you're not, you're, not, you're not watching the news all day long? No, I am not watching the news all day long. You don't care what's happening with the, with the government and this and that? Correct. I don't care. Do we have to know a little bit? Maybe a little bit here and there sometimes. But, but today, right now, I don't have to know this. I don't need this on my mind right now. Am I going to have to vote? And should I do a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, research? Nope. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. I love that. Sandra says, no, nope, nope. you don't have to. Nope. Maybe not. Nope. But certainly right now, certainly today, certainly in the moment right now, you're not going to suck me in. I'm not falling for your trap to get into all these mind games over here. I'm not going. I am happy and I have a Muna. And I'm, you know what I'm going to do today? A whole list of good things. That's what I'm going to do. Right? So this is the difference between the two. So there's a, another part that we're going to move on to next. So what happens? The Chacham, the Tam says all of these things to the Chacham. 
right? He gives over this whole vort that I just said. <coughs> Maybe in better words, I don't know. And does it work on the Chacham? It does not work. These words do not help the Chacham whatsoever. Why? Machmas klipas haleitzanis. Because of the klipa of leitzanis. How do you translate leitzanis? Frivolity, maybe uh, mockery. Foolishness. Foolishness, maybe. Leasiness. Why? <coughs> that's, that's uh, no. no that's Close. Foolishness. Why? What does he say? Because this guy, everything that the Chacham, that the Tam said, in the eyes of the Chacham is a joke. And he's like, this guy's crazy. Just like those people are going to say to me, what do you mean? You're not, you're not reading the news today? You're not, you're not going to, you're, you're not going to ruminate. That's the, that's the word I was going to Ruminate on this particular juicy bit of uh, government conspiracy or medical or, or, or America or Canada. You're not going to, you're not, you're not spending time thinking about this today. You must be crazy. You religious people. You're just, you're just off the, you're, you're not part of the world really. Halavai. I should be able to say that. You're right. That's correct is what I'm going to say to such a person. I'm, I'm not interested. But they, there's a klipa of leitzanis, where they take that and turn it into mockery. You're just happy. You're just simple and happy. And you just have a muna. And that's how, how you live your life. Yeah, that's how I'm doing it. That's what I'm doing. Oh, okay. So you're just, you're in a fantasy world. You're a crazy person. That's the klipa of leitzanis stepping in, stepping in over here. So what happens? So this is what this is what we're saying over here. We have to make sure that when it comes to these things, that we we, we guard ourselves from falling into the trap of this type of late sonus, this type of, of joking game mockery vision. Because, you know, even if you're a person who has, who has a little bit of emuna, maybe, right? You might look at another person who, who, who lives in a, in a slightly more flamboyant emuna simcha way than you. And you might look at them and be like, okay, you know, I have emuna and I'm happy and things are okay. But that guy's off the deep end over here. That's a weirdo, right? Watch it. What are you doing? That person might be in total emuna with absolute simcha. Doing amazing things in the world and davening and learning, helping people, chesed, you know? How do you, how do you know? Don't fall into the trap of, of, of late sonus, of mockery. With yourself also. You can look at yourself and say, what am I doing? I should be studying in an academic level. I should be serious. I should be having conversations with people that are very lofty about the latest things in the world. What am I doing? Just, you know... Being, being an easygoing, happy person that loves to, like, like, uh, like Rib Shmuel said over here, go out and breathe the air, see the trees, feel the, hear the wind and the grass, and, and think about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right? Some people think I'm crazy when I tell them to do these things, right? And that's okay. That's what this is. It's exactly what this is. Ah, it can be beautiful. So don't... Don't fall into the trap of people making you think you're crazy. I think this might fall under the term. I don't like using it because it gets used in very negative ways nowadays. But this might fall under the term that we might call something like spiritual gaslighting. Right? I just made it up like a second. So. <laughs> but, but, you know, gaslighting means, means that, that, that someone is trying to convince you that you're the crazy one. That you have all these issues and you're really, you're the... It happens with people who like to call people narcissists a lot mm-hmm. nowadays. But the Chacham is the epitome of the wise person, and yet he falls into the trap. And he, he, doesn't, he falls into a trap. Yeah. Because you can have all the Chachma, but no, you're, right. you don't have that. So remember, the Chacham the Chachma of this story, right, he, he is not wise at all. No, he has a sharp mind. Right. He has very good talents. And the story is all about how this person who is very bright goes on a, on a very long and deep descent and becomes worse and worse, more unhappy and more unhappy, further away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and just ruins his whole entire life. Whereas the Tam goes the other way. He, 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 he's a simple person. He just, he's, he has yashras. 
He's a simple, upright, good person who looks for good and tries to do good. And we're coming to, by the way, very, very soon, maybe next class, maybe the one after, the point at which he takes off, where, where something happens that's, that's, that's beyond the, the, the confines of a natural existence. It happens to him because of, because of his behavior. So that's where we're at this moment. Let's go a little bit weiter. <coughs> so let's see in this other... By the way, I have this amazing book. I want to thank um, Rabbi Daniel Fish, who is close to Rav Kivak. He sent me this book. This is the Sipur Emaisius, the stories of Rabbi Nachman, with a condensed version of this commentary in, uh, in, in book form. It's very geschmack, and there's some amazing stuff in here. So let's see. Let's see what we got over here. So, so, so the Tam says to the Chacham, now, Chacham thinks he's crazy, right? The Tam says to the Chacham, Regular people who mock me, right? They're stupid. Why? Because if they're more wise than me, Adarabah, sorry, Haloi Adarabah, wouldn't it be the opposite? If they're more wise than me, then why, why, why would they have a problem with me? They know they're above me. Right? What, what are they talking about? Him shaitim. They're stupid. All the more so, a wise person like you. What does that mean? You, you can understand. You're a great wise person like you. You should be able to understand. Right? You're, <laughs> you, think I'm, you think I'm stupid. I'm a shoyta. And, and you think that you can say this and you're making fun of me because you're a chacham? What, what are you doing? You're, you're supposed to be such a great chacham? Why are you comparing yourself to a lowly shoyta like me? To a mishuga like me? Right? If you want to call yourself a chacham, compare yourself to another chacham and show how you're great. This doesn't make any sense. You know better, says the time to the chacham, than to do such a thing. Right? Matiya im ata chacham imeni. This is something very awesome. What's going to be with you if you are wiser than me? What does that tell about yourself if you're wiser, if you're more wise than me? This is the question he asks him. But let's see a little deeper what he's saying over here. I'll read through this whole thing. It's Gavadik. Generally speaking, a person gets hurt or affected by other people making fun of them, Right? And they, fought, they, they, they get uh, very upset. Maybe I, made, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe there is something wrong with me. Right? The Tom feels very strongly that with his Tamimus, he is fulfilling a tremendously upright way. He's doing something very... Yashris means straight or upright. He's doing really something that, that, that's, that's very upright. Because even if he, he's not so great at doing things, and he doesn't complete the things that he does less necessarily, as perfectly as the Chachamayim. But since he's doing everything that he's able to do, he's really working and he's putting in his effort, and he's accomplishing what he's able to accomplish. Zehu Shlemus Bavurai. According to him, by him, that's called shlemus. That's called being complete. Right? So, I had, I had one friend who, uh, so interesting. I never had something like this before in, in my life. I had one friend who, who was uh, around my age. And this friend also became a rabbi. And whatever, his life didn't go the same way as mine went. And he had, he didn't have a, a good group of people surrounding him. And he had this very, very strong sense of competition with me. And he would openly tell me about it. And he's like, don't you feel it? And, and I was like, no, why would, I, <laughs> why, would I, why would I feel like that? You have a whole bunch of other things that you do that, are, that I can't do that are fantastic. Like, you do you, I'll do me, you know? What, what, what should I tell you? And this person... At one point, we since have, have reconciled from this issue. But you know what this person did? Is he made it his business to push me in as many ways as he possibly could. To push my buttons, because he's like, you have to break. He couldn't stand it that I just wasn't 
getting upset or I wasn't engaging. You know, yeah, I wasn't engaging. But also that I wasn't I was just like I'm no tzaddik, yeah. but but I just I didn't feel <clears throat> I'm doing what what I'm doing. I'm not doing what you're doing. We're different people. Why why should we why should we have such a thing? <clears throat> and then finally, I just I, I got upset with him. I guess I got hit a little bit. And I said like why 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 are you doing this? I'm not interested in having a relationship if you're going to try to push me to my breaking point. Like this is not this is not good. Anyway, since then there we uh we got onto a better path. Another thing happened a little while later in the same realm, but <laughs> but but such a person is 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 doing exactly what, what what he just said over here. Right? And what did he just say? The most important thing is that if a person is doing everything in their personal ability. They're accomplishing what they can accomplish, right? And it doesn't mean level of effort even. It means we all have our talents and different ways that we can do good things in the world. And if I'm doing my things, then, 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 then and even if they're not, they're not perfect, I'm not the number one at what I do. Okay, but I'm doing and I'm working. I'm trying hard. That is called shlemus. Am I... Right? The number one in the world? Nope. Does that matter? No. Shem gave me abilities in a certain way and he gave me a level of accomplishment that I can, that I can do in there. And as long as I'm, as I'm being me and I'm trying hard to be me, that's a sense of shlemus and I can be happy. I can be okay with that. Right? It's like I remember hearing a story about uh, one of my friends told me in Australia <coughs> there was a... Uh, a famous bakery, and one of the things that they were, an old bakery, long, it was there for a long time, and one of the things that, that, that they were really good at is they had this like legendary challah. The challah was so good, everybody bought the challah, it was fantastic, whatever. I don't know if this story is true, but this person has told me that he's from Australia, he told me a story a few times. And he said that another guy opened up a bakery like right across the street. And, and so people were like, chutzpah, what are you, aren't you upset with this person? And the guy was like, no, listen, he'll open up his bakery. And, you know, there's a lot of people. There's enough, there's enough business for Hashem can provide for everybody. Mm-hmm. Basically, is the way this person said. And so the guy opened up the bakery. And Nebuch, the bakery was not doing so well. And people weren't going. You know, they got the famous challah that everyone loves over here. Why should they go, why should they go next door? Right? And theirs wasn't, wasn't so good. So what did the owner of the old store do? He went over to the, the new store and gave the guy his challah recipe. And said, here, I'll help you. You need better challah. You need better bread if you're going to be successful. And he gave him his challah recipe. And sure enough, they both were able to flourish. <coughs> right? It's not, it's not a miracle story. It's just, it's just an aspect of having a muna means you can do kind things. I don't have to worry about well, what's going to be with me. I could be a good, kind person. I could have shlemus. I could be do things that are complete from my frame of reference, my my personal existence, right? So it's important. Um, yeah, a lot to say about this. Let's go a little farther because there's something over here that I think is really, really fantastic. A chaf, the Rav Kivak, you know, Rav Kivak is very good at. At, at really getting into the words and pulling out deeper meaning from individual words. So let's see, let's see the rest of this paragraph. This is a very beautiful way of thinking of Tamimus. An upright, proper way of thinking. That he looks at himself and not the rest of the world. Who am I? On the opposite side <coughs> of these people who are constantly making fun of him, mocking him, mocking another person. Hey, ma'akmi they're, they're, they're dementing, they're, they're, they're making crooked their, their intellect. That's not great English, by the way. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're examining and testing everything according to what's going on in the world. Right? So, you know, I know we've all spoken about this before, and many of us have experienced this, where maybe you decided, I want to be a person of positivity. I want to be a person of simcha. 
And I want to be a person who only uses my dibor, my words, for good things. Right? And so you train yourself to not say bad things about other people, to not be critical of other people, to see good things in other people. And you, you have a new existence. And you have a chance at being a happy person, right? And then, let's say six months, a year later, you find yourself sitting somewhere at a table with the old chevra. And you realize that all anyone does is look around and make fun of every person and criticize them and say what's wrong with them. And, and you realize that you just, you spent the last, who knows how many years doing nothing other than tearing apart other people and laughing, right? I certainly had this experience many, maybe 25 years ago. Yeah, you had this experience today. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah, it's, uh, and you still, you meet people that, that are like this. It's painful if, you, if you've turned yourself into a person who looks for good and looks for positivity, it's painful to interact in that way, mm-hmm. you know? And you have but to- You still need boundaries even if you look for the positive in everybody. Meaning what? That sometimes if you look for only see the good, you miss out oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. certain red flags with people. Right. That's discerning. That's yeah. okay. It's not okay. No, discerning is okay. But you have to be aware of boundaries. Right. So okay. so uh, Nancy's yeah, making a good is. point that, that we've spoken about before. Yeah. That looking for the good in people doesn't mean that you that you do oh. things blindly. And if I'll use the example that I always use, it's a little bit uh, heavy. But, you know, if you find someone who's a convicted pedophile, you're not going to be like, oh, I'm, I saw he yeah, did some good, good things. Yeah. yeah, I'll let you babysit my kids. No problem. Of course, you're not going to. If you know somebody who, who has like, who has, who has defrauded a bunch of companies and, and been brought to court numerous times, right? So you, you're not going to go into business with him. However, you can, on, at that moment, you can choose to see something good about them. And you can choose also to, to, one of the ways I look at this also is to understand, you know, how it's difficult to be in their, in, in their situation, right? And how maybe things came out in a way that was, not, that was not good. However, the main thing is, is you can find good in any person. That's right. But with, also with boundaries, of the course. The neshama is perfect. Yeah. What? The neshama is perfect. So if you can separate the neshama from the action. Yeah. And that that come, it comes out in some in some every there, there's no single person out there who hasn't who doesn't have good things, right? Every person has some good things even in this world. You can see them. Yeah. I think if you're around people that make fun of you, it's a sign of maturity that you just separate from them because I think a lot of people are always start off as adolescents or growing up a lot of times with people that make fun of you. But the the spiritual person or the person who matures kind of grows out of that Hopefully, everybody grows out of that yeah. but I think it's a, a good if people see just say well I just want to be by myself and find yeah. other people it's yep. a sign of maturity yeah yeah we got to go grow through it so let's see this amazing word word uh, word um, darshaning that he does over here he's like he's <coughs> like also like remember the Chacham is never happy he goes to a, to a dinner somewhere and he has, uh, you know, he has a, a steak with wine, right? And he's like, oh, this doesn't compare to that time when I was sitting in Bordeaux and I had wine right from the winery and a freshly cooked, beautiful steak, right? This, this, is, this is not good. This is, not, this is nothing compared to, to what I know. He's never happy because he's looking at this, this moment through the words of, of, of Rav Kivak over here. Bo'ichrim kol davar levi istaklus ha'olam. He's examining and judging everything based on the whole entire world of experience. You got, you got a steak and a wine right now. Just enjoy it. Why do you have to put it down and not, and not enjoy it and be unhappy? The Chacham is not happy any place he goes. He goes into a certain Achsanya hotel and he's like, ugh, the linen's in this place. What am I in, a Super 8? I don't know, <laughs> low-end hotel chain. I have been to the, I don't even know the good hotel, hotels, the Waldorf Astoria in New York. Yeah. Yeah? Never been there. <laughs> right? I, and now I have to be here. How can I possibly? I've, 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 had, I've been with people like this. Yeah. Everywhere you go. Okay, if you stop in a cheap hotel, you know where you are. Baruch Hashem, I have a, I have a roof over my head tonight. I have a somewhat... 
soft-ish bed to sleep in tonight. I'm not out in, in the cold. Thank God. I have something to be happy about, right? So this is, this is, this is the histaklis over here. And this is what the, the, the Tam says to the Chacham. This is the words he said. What, so the, real, the regular translation of this is what will be for you, what's going to be for you if you're a bigger Chacham than me? Meaning like, like it's, you're not saying anything. I'm, I'm, I'm a simple person. What does it mean for you if you're if you're wiser than me? What are you comparing yourself to me for? It's not telling you anything, right? So, but the words are a little bit funny. So he says, "Kleimar, ata, itecha." What is going to be with you? What's going to be with the you? What has happened to your individuality, to your sense of your own individual nature and your own individual existence? What has happened to the ata? To the you, it's gone. There's nothing left of you. All you're doing is looking at everything from being like, oh yeah, you know, that's, you like that song? Yeah, it's not Beyonce though, right? <laughs> you like you like that? Ah, it's not this. Like you're you're not you're not existing. You're just looking at everything from judging everything based on other people. What about you? Do you like the way this sounds? Do you like the way this? Well, yeah, but it's not high on the charts. I didn't ask you if it's high on the charts. I asked you, do you like the music? Does it make you happy? Right? Ah, no, nah, people don't really dance to this so much in the club. I don't care who does what anywhere. Does this music make you happy personally? Where is the you? The you is gone. You're just looking at what everyone else has and what the whole rest of the world is doing. And you're not actually thinking, am I okay with this? Do I like this? Does this make me happy? Funny wine example, by the way. Um, so uh, I know a lot about wine. And I happen to have somewhat expensive tastes. I really like very expensive wine. <coughs> I, don't, uh, I don't like advertise that too much. Because I also love getting any bottle of wine and, and tasting it, smelling it, and understanding from the way the wine tastes and smells and looks, where it came from and how it was grown and how the region and everything made it what it is. I love this. So, so many people, when they, when they come to the house, say, for a Shabbos meal, and they bring me a bottle of wine, many people will say, or they'll bring a cake. They'll say, yeah, I didn't want to bring you wine because you know, I know you know a lot about wine, right? And, and, or they'll bring a bottle of wine and say, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't really know about wine. I shouldn't have got to you this. But whenever I tell them, what are you talking about? I love it because I... What, what, what am I saying over here? You could have a person who doesn't, who doesn't, who can't appreciate something in this way and they'll get a bottle of wine and what might be their question? Maybe they'll, they'll Google it and be like, do people give this wine a high rating? Mm. If they don't give it a high rating, I don't want it, right? Or yeah, this gets a low rating, it's gonna go in the back of the shelf for the guests who don't know anything about wine, right? So well, what, why? Why don't you give yourself the opportunity to taste something and see how it's unique, how it's different? Right? Judge for yourself. I mean, you can look at many, many things in the world this way. Right? Maybe, a, maybe a, an important point is to do with children. Right? Because we have children, and as we know, children are, from the time they're born, they are individual, unique personalities. They're different. Right? They're not, none of them are the same. They can be from the same family. <coughs> I have twins. Right? That were born one minute apart. And they are polar opposites. They're vastly, they share some good qualities, but they're vastly different and unique. Right? So, so you can, everybody knows this. I'm not saying a chiddish over here, but everybody knows that in parenting, you can't do comparative parenting. Why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more like your sister? What? You got a C? Your brother or sister got only A pluses. What's wrong with you? Why can't you? You can't do that, obviously. Right? <clears throat> because you have to know that they're an individual person. And you have to be able to look at that person and say, what is the talents of this person? What are the challenges of this person? What are the struggles? What's my job? Is to give this person a, a secure, fertile ground for growth. That they can become that unique person that they're supposed to be. Do my best. That's all I can do. 
in Bitz Hashem, they'll grow up and they'll start to figure it out and they'll, and they'll see and they may not, <laughs> they, <laughs> this is a funny statement. I was going to say they may not turn out the way that you wanted them to turn out, right? And uh, who knows? But I think as we, as we go through life and the kids grow up, you see that they're, they're, they're unique, they're individuals. You have to adjust your vision of what you, what you want for your kids as they grow and they, they develop. Because they're a unique person. And they're going to be something, I don't know what it's going to be, but, but I'm going to help to the best of my ability. Right? But I'm certainly not going to try and force them to be what the whole world tells them they have to be. Or, what, or, what, or, what, or like their brother or their sister. Right? I have, to, I have to allow them to be an atta. And now, a person who's an atta, who's an individual, who has a sense of, of themselves, can now decide when, you know, when, when he had this problem, when he made the, the stone that had the imperfection. When he made the ring, when he made the ring that he knew was tremendously beautiful and that in Spain they loved it, but this guy didn't like it. What, what would such a person say? Oh, you don't like it? Really, because I really like it. To me, this is very beautiful. You don't like it? Okay, what can we do that you will like? Right? Because I'm an individual. I'm a, I'm, I'm a me. And I like it. You don't like it? No problem. He's always only worried. What are other people saying about me? If you keep going like this, you're going to be filled with suffering all your days, all the time. Amazing, eh? What an idea. So we got to remember, we have, we, have, we have a few things in today's, uh, in today's year so far. We have that we have to make sure that we allow ourselves to become simple. Become simple and ask our crazy chacham person, what are you doing? Why are you so upset all the time? There's good things to look at. There's things to be happy about. Don't focus on this. Allow ourselves to, to have the inner monologue of tamimus, maybe is the proper way to say it, right? That's the first thing. <coughs> and the second thing is, is don't allow ourselves to look at and judge everything in the world based on the worldview of everything. Rather, what is my interaction with this thing? How can I do something what are we always saying? Do something good right now is the aspect of Tumimus. How can I, in relation to this, do something good? That's it. Right? When they feed you that, when they put, bring that steak to you and it's not exactly the way you wanted it, right? So you can say, okay, it's not exactly the way, the way I wanted it. <coughs> but instead of making a scene and causing them to lose money and being upset about it and crazy, I'm going to say, okay, Baruch Hashem, I have a lot of protein, iron, <laughs> Right? Yes. At least it's, it's, it's someone made it for me. I'm going to have to cook it myself. Right? I am going to choose to enjoy it right now and be thankful for it. Right? And to, uh, to Nancy's point, it doesn't mean you have to go back to that restaurant. <laughs> right? But right now, why should, I, why should I allow this to ruin my night? From, to make me unhappy the whole rest of the night. Right? Okay, you can argue with me on that one, but, but okay. So the, the, the Tam says to the Chacham, maybe it could be, I'll translate it as, let's see what, Ravar is, what Rabbi Brody translates it as. One second. Almost there, one second. What would I not give for you to come to my level? The Tam says to the Chacham, the simple one says to the wise one, what would I not give for you to come to my level? For you to be at my level, right? That's not how I really read it, but, but me, you t- could, it, could, it, could it possibly be that you would be able to come to my level? Is how I, is how, is how, how I read it. Shadar Kili, Stakal asks me that the, my way is to look at myself to see what is good for me. And when I understand that I'm doing what is within my ability to do, I feel a sense of joy and happiness, and I feel a sense of being complete. 
I'm doing me, and I'm doing me to the best of my ability. V'chan Ramaz Rabbeinu, and here Rabbi Nachman is hinting to us, Shagam l'chachamim, yesh tikva l'ishtanais l'izkois l'tamimus t'kedusha. That there's, there is hope for someone who has this type of mindset, someone who is a quote-unquote chacham. There is hope for them to change and to merit, to reach a level of, tami, of holy simplicity. Tamimus t'kedusha. V'akol tali b'syate d'shmaya. Shizoichin ayadei tefila of his karvus at tzadikim kamosh yisbarach kamosh yisbar b'seif ha'maisa, and it's all dependent on. Wow, this is this is uh, this is kind of like spoiler alert. It's possible for anyone to get to this very high level, but it's all dependent on siyata deshmaya, help from heaven, right? Shizoichin ayadei that we merit through tefila and becoming close to tzadikim, right? And this. It's not, it's not me. It's not that I'm going to force it to happen. It's not that I'm going to travel the world and find all of the biggest wis- wisdom, right? It's not even something that I, certain people would get upset if I said this. It doesn't matter how many books I read. It doesn't, how, it doesn't matter how many masaktas I learned. I can't get to this level except through siyata deshmaya. Hashem has to give it to me. I get it through, 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 through siyata deshmaya, help from Hashem. My own tefillah, connection to Hashem, and my connection to the tzaddikim. This is how it's going to happen. Um, <coughs> maybe let's just read the next little section of the story, and then we'll stop for today. Heishi v'chacham v'amar. The chacham answered and said, Ze efshe liyais. This is, you think this is possible? She'ani avoy al shacha, that I, that I could come to you? She had not told me many that that my wisdom could be taken away from me. God forbid, or maybe I'll get sick. Maybe a nice and meshugan, and through from the sickness I'll become crazy. You think that's what I want? Because what are you, Ish Meshuga? You're just a crazy person. But this that you should come to me, that you should come to my level. You, simple person, should come to my level of wisdom. This is not possible in any way. That you could be a chacham, a wise person like me. Hey, Shiva Tam. The Tam answered him. <coughs> Pardon me. Eitzel Hashem, Yisbarach, HaKol Efshar. By Hashem, everything is possible. Not anything is possible. Everything is possible. And not only that, it could be in the blink of an eye. Sha'ani avoy al shacha, that I come to your level. Vesicha ke chacham imenu meoid. And so the, the chacham laughed at him a lot. Schik seal, a foolish laughter. Ve'elu hashnei banim, hayu nikraim, befi ha'olam, ze bakinu mechacham, ze bechinu atam. And these two, these two boys, children of, the, of their fathers, remember, they were called by everyone in the world by the nicknames. This one was the chacham, and this one was the tam. Afal pi yish yish kama chachamim vetamim boilam. Even though there's many. Chachamim, wise people, and there's many tamim, uh, tamim mistake people, simple people in the world. Here, by these two guys, it was very obvious that one was a chacham and one was a tam. Because they were both born in the same neighborhood. They learned in the same cheder. This guy became a big genius, a worldly person. And this guy was very, very simple. That's like the, the, the government journal of the people, I guess, census, whatever it's called. I don't know. Right? What did they say over there? Shisham Kaisvim Kol Echad Im Kinui Pamalia Mishpacha Shalai. So, because, and in this journal, in the, in the town or the province or whatever, that's where they would write the name of every person, plus their, their nickname and their family name. They wrote, actually, in the, in the town journal or whatever. The, was it archive, maybe? Yeah, in, in, the, in the city archives. They wrote them that this guy was Shlomi, Chacham, Goldstein, I don't know what his name is. <laughs> right? That's how they wrote it. <coughs> says, says the story. Upam echad baha melech el haskaski. One time, the the king came to the journal over here, the archives. Umatzajay koysvim kasuvim sham elu hashnei banim, and he saw that these two sons were 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 written down over there. Zebesheim chacham, mezebesheim tam. This one was called the chacham, and this one 
it was called the Tam. One second. We're going to go a little farther in the story just to get this because it's coming to an awesome part. And it was wondrous to him. That you can have two people with these nicknames? The king had a desire to see them. He really wanted to see them. And the king thought, If I will send to them right now, (coughs) the king demands to see you. They're going to be very, very afraid. And so, and so the Chacham will, will, will not pay attention whatsoever. And maybe the Tam will go crazy from the fear. So the, the, the king decided he's going to send a, a certain wise person to the Chacham. The Tam, El Tam, and a simple person to the Tam. Rak Ech Moitzim Be'ir Malucha Tam. Where is he going to find in the, in the city of the king a Tam, a simple person? Because in the king's city, really, most people are Chachamim. However, the one who was appointed to watch over the treasure house was specifically a simple person, a Tam. Because a Chacham does not want to be appointed to be the, 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 the person who watches over the treasure house. Because maybe through his wisdom and his intellect, something could, negative could happen with, this, with the treasure house. Meaning that the king was worried that, that if he put a, a, a smart person there, he's going to maybe connive away to get something out of, the, out of the treasure house. So he appointed specifically a tam, a simple person, a simple upright person, to watch over the treasure house. So he called a wise person and a simple person, and he sent them to these two to these two guys. And he gave a, a, a kingly script, whatever it's called, to each one of them to give to them. He also gave a special letter to the governor of that area. Shall ha mushal machos shall ha shall a governor shall a governia, whatever that means. I think that just means the local governor. Sheelu hashte banim heim tachas mem That that these two boys were under his rulership. Betziva ba igares shall governor yishlach lehem igares mishmoi lechacham v'atam kadei shaloi yispachtu. And he said that the certain governor from that area should send the chacham and the tam. To these two guys, the Chacham and the Tam, so that they shouldn't be afraid. And he wrote in, in the thing that the, the thing is not is not uh, pressing. He wasn't making a gazera, making a demand that they should come. It's up to you guys. Just that the king wanted to see them. So that's a big part of the story. And this is the turning point. This is literally the point in the story where everything's going to change. And we're going to begin to see, you know, we've spent the last, this is about a year now, by the way, that we've been doing these, these classes in the Chacham Atam. And the whole story up until now has been explaining the life of the Chacham and the life of the Tam. The wonderful positive attributes of Tamimus and the real dangers and negative effects of having this chachma de sitra achra, the, uh, a, a negative type of toxic thought process and wisdom, right? So now we're going to see how, how, how the tikkun of the story happens, how it is, because cause, cause at this point, we just had some foreshadowing where, <coughs> where the, chacham, the chacham said, the tam said to the chacham, oh, if only you could come to my level, right? And the chacham laughed at him and said, and said why would I want to be at your level? I lose my wisdom? God forbid. But he said, one thing's for sure, you could never come to my level. And we're going to see that this is what happens to the Tom. The Tom, in a good way, becomes a great person and becomes very wise. And, and let's see how it happens. This is the beginning of the, I don't know what it's called in literature, I forget now. <laughs>